Welcome to a Spider Project tutorial. Today we're looking at how to navigate in Spider Project. So you have the software already installed on your PC or laptop, and you click the Spider icon to launch the software, and once launched, you get into the main program window. On the left-hand side, you have access to your projects, portfolios, and documentation, folders, or storages. And to be able to open one of the projects, you click the Open button. And in here, you get into the Projects and Documents window. This is the interface to set up your project folder structure. And um, you can see um, was that all of the projects are stored in uh, one or the other folders. Uh, or if you have um, any um, documentation there or any reporting this is where you know you you navigate and manage it so my demo projects folder at the moment is a default folder and you can see it's um, marked green color when you download a spider project demo version you get access to the demo projects and this is really cool because you can explore a bit further on the Spider project um, features um, by using some realistic uh, project um, examples. Um, each project has um, a version control uh, and it's something that Spider project uh, manages uh, automatically, so you don't need to worry about the you know uh, managing the version control. Um, you can see, for example, this selected project has got five versions, and they all um, it has they all have um, data tag. And if you decide that you don't need some of the you know versions, you can just remove them. But uh, let's go back to the folder uh, structure here. So uh, to be able to access the storage properties, you can hit the storage properties button and you get into the storage properties window here. Um, so I'd like to now add a new storage. I click the add a storage button and um, um, the software will ask me for the title and I will just call that folder Salute Projects. And um, let's update the path to, to that um, storage. And what I'd like to do, I'd like to make the folder a default storage um, for all my future projects. And um, I can also manage the hierarchy. And for now, I'll just keep it at the same level as all the other folders here. I click the OK button and uh, the software will just prompt, prompt me if I really want to do it. And I say OK. And now you can see that the Salute Projects folder that I've just created, it's empty. It doesn't have any projects in there yet. But now I made it a default folder and the color has changed to green um, and my demo project is no longer a default folder. Um, so what if I wanted to remove that um, storage folder? I could uh, click this hide storage button and what it does, it tells me that it, because it's a default storage um, folder, it cannot be hidden. So what I need to do is to go into um, my, for example, demo projects folder and I make it a default storage place back again. And now if I go and try to remove my newly created Salute Projects folder and I try to hide it, the software would allow me to do it and it, can, um, it will notify me that this folder can actually be restored. At the moment, I'm not deleting it, I'm only hiding it from the view. And um, I could bring it back by restoring, you know, clicking the restoring um, a hidden um, um, storage uh, button. But at the moment, um, I can't do that because I need to first show all the hidden storages by clicking that box. And now you can see the red color on my Salute uh, Projects um, folder. And if I click the Restore Hidden Storage, it will bring it back to the active state. So just remember to click this box here to show hidden storages if you think that you actually have some um, storages there but you're not um, able to see them because you might have accidentally or um, consciously um, hidden it and uh, you want to bring them back to the view. 
But now if I uh, click the um, hide button and hit OK, and because I can actually now see my hidden storages, if I select that folder and click that button again, um, the software will permanently remove this and this folder will not be, you know, it's something not, a, I won't be able to restore this folder back again. So if I hit OK now, that folder has disappeared completely. So um, this is a few um, hints and tips on the navigating through the um, storage folders. Also, you can move the folders in the hierarchy going you know, up and down or even you know, um, uh, level down um, or bringing you know, um, that folder moving um, up again in the hierarchy. So this is how you navigate in the um, storage um, space. So for now, let's just um, go and look at the main properties um, of the system. So if we go into the um, workplace options here in the main menu, in the main program window, this is how you get access to the workplace options. Um, basically, that's where you run your global settings. And um, just remember that there's a special location for that in the main program window. So once you have a project open, and now I'm going to use one of my project examples, one kilometer of road construction, I just click OK and I get into that particular project uh, view. Let me just minimize that window. And um, now I'm in the main program window and I can see that this is the project that's uh, currently opened and you can have a number of projects open um, at the same time. But um, on the right hand side, you can see that I have access to my project dashboard. And I can um, access all of the diagrams, activities and links, resources, cost, uh, materials, assignments, calendars, performance, group work, filters, formulas and scripts, templates, risk analysis area, and some other functions. So all of these could also be accessed from the actual project um, main menu bar here, or from the quick um, access toolbar on the left. And this quick access toolbar could also be modified by, you know, right clicking and uh, inserting the buttons from the from the list here. So all of these functions we've just looked at um, via the main um, dashboard. And uh, to be able to add one or another um, item from here, you just um, select um, that item and click the add button and that uh, you know uh, button gets added to the toolbar. Or if you wanna remove it, you just right click and um, hit delete. So this is just to set up uh, the preferences of the quick access toolbar. Spider project was developed as the multi-window interface environment, which means that you don't need to close um, your dialog uh, box um, every time you want to switch between the two areas. For example, if you double click on one of the activity um, lines there, you get into the activity form a dialog box, a window, and you don't need to close this box um, if you want to uh, go into you know, the properties of another activities. For example, if I'm working on my links um, and I want to have access to the particular um, task and uh, the preceding activities of that task and um, change any of the key parameters of uh, that particular link, I can do it from here and uh, from this window. And if I want to go and switch to another activity, I just go into my activities um, table and navigate through the list. Um, and I don't have to close this window and go back into the activities list and open it this window again, um, which is really cool, um, it saves my time. So um, another great uh, thing about a, a Spider project interface is that um, the active um, Gantt chart view 
um, has got uh, three areas uh, that's um, you know all the three areas um, are divided um, you know with this by these bars and you can pull the bar and um, make you know that um, view uh, set it up to whatever you like it to, to be and if you go and um, click the printing uh, option uh, you can actually see that uh, all of these uh, other columns are hidden at the moment and if you you know drag the bar and go and hit the printed options again you know very easy to establish what you actually want to be visible on the you know on the printing area without going into um, your table header and you know hiding the columns and showing the columns and um, working you know uh, with these columns um, and I'm updating them again and again. So the table is also divided into two parts um, for the same reason, so it's more convenient and you can adjust the printing view um, uh, very easily. So um, another area where you um, establish the settings for your uh, Gantt chart um, is that you can go and uh, right click on the head of the Gantt um, area and go into settings. And this is where you get access to the Gantt diagram settings window and in, a uh, in some primary settings, the time scale settings and some additional settings. Uh, for example, you can tick the shift links with legs box and click OK and then um, on the Gantt chart your links are now uh, represented as a point to point if you know based on the uh, leg embedded into your logic which um, I really like a really really good powerful visual representation um, also you can um, establish the settings for you know your um, dialogues with how you work with the windows and how you switch between the windows um, and um, the printing settings that we've looked uh, at just now and uh, the Gantt chart settings and also some um, color um, color setup for different areas for you know general colors Gantt chart colors um, even links you can actually apply some color coding to the links in spider project for example um, you can make all of your critical links um, red color um, again, a very visual, um, you know, a very good visual representation on a Gantt chart. And um, also you can um, change some settings of the fonts um, as well. So um, hopefully you enjoyed our session today on some of the hints and tips on how to navigate in Spider project. And uh, looking forward to see you soon again. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Um,